Welcome to part three of our travels in Africa, where we go chimpanzee tracking in Chibali Forest. Yes, I know it's spelled K-I-B-A-L-E, but it's pronounced Chibali. I got up early and went and sat outside the lodge in the dawn so I could get an early cup of coffee and a snack before we went on our final shoebull trip. The output of that is in the previous video. The noises of the forest kept me company until the staff arrived and opened up the lodge. After our morning shoebill tracking session and breakfast, we all jumped in the van and headed off on the long trip to Chibali. As I mentioned in the previous video, the trip is about 350 kilometres from Nkima and over the uh, Ugandan roads, most of which were actually pretty good bitumen roads, it took the rest of the day. Along the way we kept seeing these roadside fruit and vegetable stalls. So we stopped and got some fresh fruit. My favourites were these little sweet bananas that uh, were for sale. We don't, I don't think we can get them in Australia. They were beautiful. People were also selling this red ginger by the side of the road. I've never seen it before. You peeled it open and the inside was uh, sort of like seed pods full of wet cotton wool with black seeds in it. It was very slightly gingery flavoured, pretty sweet and very interesting. Um, when we got to the lodge, we tried it in um, gin and tonic. I think we've invented something there. This area is at quite a high altitude and two of the things that surprised me uh, to see were the eucalyptus trees and tea fields. There were lots of tea fields and lots of eucalypts. We saw trucks carrying tea, people harvesting tea. It turns out that it's actually quite a big industry in Uganda. With the eucalyptus trees in the background there, it reminds me of Pemberton. The main road cuts through the northern section of the Chibali forest and we began to see signs that we might be on the right track if we wanted to see chimpanzees. On arrival at the lodge, we were given the obligatory cool, refreshing drink, which was welcomed after our long trip. The lodge itself is on a very steep hillside, um, just outside the Chibali forest. Chalets were um, some way down the slope. Not very far from the lodge as the crow flies, but vertically quite a challenging walk. The lodge itself was quite nice, but the views, oh the views, I've never seen anything like it in my life. It's not really cold, it's just cool. Down that way is the Virunga Mountains in Rwanda, in Democratic Republic of Congo. These mountains here are the Ranzori Mountains. There's still permanent snow on them. And sort of classically referred to as the mountains of the moon. The valley behind the lodge was the eastern branch of the Great Rift Valley, and beyond that was the foothills of the Ruinsori Mountains.
One viewer geography geek like me couldn't resist was to the south. You can see the Virunga Mountains in the far distance, which are in Rwanda, but also in the Southern Hemisphere. We're still in the Northern Hemisphere here at Icewunga. The equator runs through the middle of that lake in the middle distance, and once we finish the chimpanzee tracking and head south towards Bruindi, we'll cross that and cross the equator. We got up early the next morning to head off to the Kanyanchu station in Chibali Forest for our first session of chimpanzee tracking. The dawn and the scenery were still at it. After an early breakfast, we set off past the local lake to the Kanyanchu Visitor Centre. We'll be doing our chimpanzee tracking from there. Our plan is to do two sessions, one today and one tomorrow morning, to increase our chances of success. If we find chimpanzees, we get, I think, two hours with them before we have to leave. It's boots, long sleeves and trousers for wandering around in the tropical rainforest. Some people tended to dress more high fashion than us. Uh, don't know what they would have done if they'd come across a scorpion. While we were finalising our permits and waiting for the pre-tracking briefing, some of the local baboons strolled through. They're fairly common. Mm. He's steady. I'm a bit surprised when we head off down the entrance drive with our guide and then onto the sealed road we came in on. Past the baboons, they're not bothered by us. I wouldn't want to upset any of the bigger males. They're not small and they give you the eye as you walk past. Anyway, Renato knows this guide and says he knows his stuff. Being a bit of a fisherman, I understand that the quarry is not always way out there. After about two kilometres, we turn off into the forest. There is a wild fig tree here in fruit, and the chimpanzees know it. It's not in the territory of the band we're trying to locate, but the guide thinks they're likely to risk a bit of trespass to get a good feed. They're not there. The guide fills us in on the situation, and is going to go for a wander to see if he can find them. There are other guides and other groups out, and they communicate by radio, Yes, that is a rifle he's carrying. This is wild forest with elephants and buffalo. The elephants especially can move silently. The chap in the blue rain jacket is a work experience student getting exposure to the wildlife services and chimpanzee tracking, not something you see every day. The wild figs the chimps may come for are high in the canopy, probably 20 to 30 metres up if not more. From the ground you can't see them, but my 600mm lens shows them quite nicely. So we wait. And we wait. Can't hurry these things. We may not even be in luck today, although the guide, sorry I've forgotten his name, was pretty confident he'd see chimpanzees. The forest is cool and damp and quiet. You begin to notice the fungus, the ferns and all the understory plant life. There are butterflies and small birds in the understory where it's too dim to photograph them. We're all chatting quietly with the serious photographers comparing equipment, you know, as you do. I'm talking to the work experience student who looks around and says, get your camera ready, they're coming. And they're here. We were caught unawares, masks up first and then cameras out. They come down the way we walked, heading for the fig tree. The bigger males walk right by us, but some of the females stop, and a bit surprised at seeing us, shepherd the young ones around. One of the youngsters gets a clip around the ear at this stage. Instead of climbing the large main trunk of the fig tree, they go up smaller trees and through the canopy to where the goodies are. Smart on their part, but it makes them hard to see and photograph.
I'm sorry. She, she just moved. It takes a while to spot them in the dense canopy where they're feeding. Not yet receptive. You can take your mask off. I had to, right? Let's see what's going on. Searching. The table manners are not all that refined, stuffing in fruit and just letting accumulated skins fall out. Between the ripe figs falling when the chimp grabs a bunch, the spat out skins and well the chimp pea, standing directly under the tree becomes not a good idea. By now we've been joined by another group of trackers and their guide and we retreat to the edge of the danger zone. The ground becomes littered with overripe and chewed up figs and a liberal dose of primate urine. I'm just trying to stay out of the rain of figs and pea. Not all of them are in the tree feeding their faces. At least one chimpanzee decides we might provide some entertainment and sits and relaxes quite closely to be amused by our antics. I think we turned out to be as interesting as an ad break on TV. Not a lot of riveted attention there. Eventually they start to come down and wander off. Mothers and babies, pretty much all of them, descend and head off. The guides follow at a discreet distance and gesture us to follow. While we're looking for where they've gone, some of the stragglers walk right by us. The big male brings up the rear. Idiot, I just had it in macro mode. This a big lad.
So what now in the chimpanzee day? Turns out it's a post-meal chill time. They're just resting on the forest floor with full stomachs. We don't seem to bother them in the slightest, but the guides keep an eye on us to make sure we don't get too close. Once our time is up, we walk back to the Kanyanchi station. All this has taken place not 200 metres from the road. You can hear cars in some of the footage. We've gone from thinking today may be a washout to having a close encounter where the chimpanzees found us. Glad they weren't elephants. Once back at Osunga, we had lunch and the afternoon rain moved in, turning on a show that only the tropics can. The end of the rain brought the birds out, most of which I couldn't get good shots of. The weaver birds got busy with some improvements and repairs. I also got to see my first chameleon. Smaller than I thought, but it's definitely a chameleon. The clearing rain also lifted the clouds on the Ruinzori Mountains a bit and we got to see the snow. Not a lot, but snow it is, and about 50 kilometres from the equator. Then it's laptops out, GNT within reach, backup photos and make plans for our trip to tomorrow. Um, this SD card from the camera onto the drive. They're backing everything up. Sort of a gin and tonic with some Uganda gin, and I'm going to try a new invention. That there is red ginger, and I'm going to try a red ginger um, gin and tonic. I'll let you know how it goes. The day dawned beautiful again. The plan is breakfast, then back to Kanyanchu for a second session of chimpanzee tracking, then off to Bahoma where we'll do the gorilla tracking. It's about 280 kilometres and a five hour drive. We can get started on the tracking earlier today as we did the permits and orientation talk yesterday. <coughs> Doing the YouTuber thing, I thought I'd show my ugly face to prove that yes, I'm. Uh, really here. Uh, one, the view behind me is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life. Dawn this morning was um, incredible. Birds, you can hear this uh, thorn tree here. Little Richard birds up there, They're, it's a uh, weaver bird. I am definitely going to miss this view. The clouds cleared off the top of the mountains there last night. <coughs> oh, about sunset. Um, oh, just 
sort of interesting statistic, uh, two interesting statistics, which we're looking across the, the eastern, western, one of the two rift valleys um, to the mountain range there. The highest peak in that mountain range, which is about, where's the camera? Come here. Oops. Which is about there. Uh, is about sixteen and a half thousand feet, so you know five five and a bit thousand meters in real numbers. So it's um yeah, it's quite the mountain range. You know, off to off to the location today where we're going to go um, gorilla tracking. Oh, uh, we're going chimp tracking again on the way down in the down in the forest there. Mm -hmm. Today we head off in a different direction. We head off into the forest and across the swampy ground behind the ranger station. The chimpanzees are in home territory today and we're tracking them by their vocalisations. Well that and our guide has a pretty good idea where they are. There's a lot of making our way through the undergrowth, backtracking at times and trying to work out how to get to where the chimpanzees seem to be. Why do you have your mask on, Andy? Just look it. Hmm? Get this way. Also, stop the flies when flies. Eventually we find them. They're feeding in the trees lower than yesterday. The sunny sky makes photographing them easier. Also, unlike yesterday, they seem to be feeding on leaves and not fruit. Soon they come down to the forest floor and we have to find them again. Before long, they settle down into a couple of groups on the forest floor, for the most part just relaxing and with the groups calling to each other. Just sitting here quietly on the ground.
at one time there seems to be a bit of a difference of opinion with a couple of them leaving to go elsewhere. <coughs> Eventually it all seems to settle down and everybody goes back to chilling again. All too soon our time is up and we have to head back to the ranger station. Not far from the main chimpanzee group we find a mother with a small baby. Like the others she doesn't seem to be bothered by us so we stay to watch for a while. It's about half an hour or so back through the forest to Kanyanshu. There we can eat the lunch I sung a lodge pack for us. Sandwiches, fruit, hard-boiled local eggs washed down with a fruit juice from the Kanyanshu cafe. Then it's into the trusty van for the five-hour trip to Bahoma. Sounds boring, but no, I don't think Uganda does boring. So it's goodbye until next time when we see if we can spend some time with mountain gorillas in Buindi Impenetrable Forest. <laughs>